Hello again, welcome back to Asgard and welcome back to our Between Lands Spotlight tutorial series. Today we're going to be talking about farming um, and the different ways of farming within the mod. This will be a little bit longer of an episode, so just a heads up. And there is a lot to cover. So we're going to go ahead and start with the bare basics, which is composting. Within the Between Lands, uh, you're not going to teal dirt and stuff to plant things. Also plants do not require water, but they do instead require compost, which compost is made through the composting bin. And to open this, you just left click it uh, to open this thing up. And then what you're going to do is you're going to take and place in items. Um, so for example, if I put in bulb cap mushrooms, you can see I can add a bunch of these. Um, you can add up to 20 items. Um, up to a point where, like for example, if I was to grab dry bark, I'm not going to be able to add as much dry bark into a composter as um, I am like bulb cap mushrooms. And the reason being, once it hits about 400 value, you're not going to be able to add any more, and dry bark has an extremely high value. So you can see that 14 is going to stop allowing uh, dry bark to be placed inside the compost bin. And um, Every different item has different compost stats, let's say. Um, they're going to have different time to compost. Uh, so for example, I've got it pulled up on the wiki here. I'm not going to list off everything with its compost times. Um, but for example, uh, dried swamp reed has a compost time of 4 minutes and 10 seconds and a compost value of 3. Whereas a piece of dry bark has a compost time of 10 minutes but a compost value of 30. Um, now dry bark, it's not gonna take 10 minutes per piece of dry bark, it's just gonna take 10 minutes uh, to compost all this dry bark down. And each piece is valued at 30. And the way you get compost is every 25 compost value that you input into a compost bin is going to create a piece of compost. And one quick thing to take note of is if you're wondering about the uh, compost time or the compost value on things you can just anything that says used in compost bin you can hit U if you have JEI um, you know available you can hit U to see the uses go over to the composter and look right here and you can see the process time for dry bark is 10 minutes compost amount is 30 that's the value so just a heads up on that um, so if you're wondering about a specific item you can find it there instead of having to go to the wiki for everything. But everything is available listed with the process time and value on the wiki as well, uh, which you can find the link down in the description. And you'll know whenever this is done running because the particles are gonna stop uh, running. So don't, don't open it or anything while it's running. Just leave it running. And then once the particles stop, then you can open it up and you can pull your compost. Also, your items won't be displayed in there. Like there won't be bulb cap mushrooms. There'll be compost in this when it finishes. Now there's one small trick which I've kind of shown off a little bit in like Celestial Journey where if you take something that doesn't have a very high compost value like I've been using you know just swamp reed not even dried just regular swamp reed which is very easy to farm and I'm inputting one into a compost bin and then I'm shutting it and putting it into a lot of compost bins I can create one piece of compost from an item that otherwise would take a lot of swamp reed to make um, a single piece of compost but I can make one to one because basically it's gonna round up if you're below one now if you go above one um, it's going to have to have the exact value otherwise it's gonna round down uh, so just bear that in mind but you can mix and match so you can do you know a compost bin with um, dry bark and bulb cap mushrooms and cardinal flowers and volar pads and you know just a mix of things that you can throw in there and an easy way to tell if it can be composted is it's going to say used in compost bin so just keep an eye out for that and, and most most plant-based materials are going to be able to be used in the compost bin as well as some mob based materials will be able to be used in the compost bin and then once it's done composting you just left click to open it back up right click to pull your compost out and you're going to get this stuff right here. This is compost. And this is the key to farming in the between lands. So like I've said before, crops in the between lands do not require water. Um, and then in addition, they cannot be trampled like normal crops can be. However, there's a few caveats um, that make it a little bit more involved 
um, than normal farming. First up, of course, it does require, require the compost. Second, you have to deal with decay, just like with player decay and tool decay, you have plant decay. And so if you just go in and you plant your stuff on swamp dirt or uh, grassy swamp dirt, um, it's going to eventually decay, which is where there's just no more nutrients in the soil. It can't grow anymore, right? And if you have a mature crop on the decayed dirt, then what's going to happen is um, that that plant is going to decay as well and all it's going to drop is seeds it's not going to drop any produce uh, so it's something to to be concerned about and to consider um, i usually don't have to deal with it but if you are planting things on swamp dirt say that the purifier is a little bit more expensive um, what you can do is you can make this plant tonic which is just ball of sap with swamp water very very cheap to make and if you right click it onto like composted dirt which we'll talk a little bit more about here in just a moment, but it's going to kind of cleanse a uh, five by five area um, of that decay. So it basically, it, it imbues those nutrients back into the ground um, and allows you to farm there again, which I'll show you the decay uh, system here in just a second, but I just wanna mention that really, really quick. Um, to be aware of so what I suggest you do is go for the purifier and get yourself purified dirt which is just some swamp dirt some swamp water some sulfur ran through the purifier to get that purified swamp dirt <clears throat> and this is no longer going to decay um, and so it's going to be a bit more effective for your farming um, as opposed to the um, you know just the regular swamp dirt and swamp grass will be able to um, kind of place itself over this purified. It doesn't get rid of the purified state, but it is going to allow you to have grass on your farmland, which is pretty nice. Now, as far as farming goes, what you need to do is you need to take your shovel, just any kind of between land shovel and just right click. And you can build out uh, these little areas here like that. And then let's go ahead and make ourselves a, a couple strips here of just regular uh, this isn't purified. You can see a very noticeable difference in color. And then what we can do is we can take, and this will fill in. If it doesn't have a crop in it, it will fill in um, after a bit. But what we can do is we can take and just put compost into this, um, which is going to make it so that this is able to be farmed in. And this compost is only going to be good for a few harvests, and then you're going to have to replace that compost. So it's important that you keep producing compost. You know, set up... Um, automated swamp reeds or set up automated um, swamp grass or you know you know do something uh, to get yourself a lot of uh, compost you can also gather up leaves and different things uh, to make this now what we're going to do is with this we can plant any kind of a seed there is two this is not a, not including a spectra seeds we're gonna cover those a little bit later on. But there's two basic seeds with in-between lands. That's white pear seeds and spores. And we can place these out. So there's some white pear seeds and then we're gonna plant some spores down through here. Um, but you can see that I can't, you know, no matter what height I fall from, I'm not gonna be able to trample these crops. So they're a little bit easier to deal with in that regard. Um, but these are the two basic crops. Now you can also farm bulb cap mushrooms, black cap mushrooms, and flathead mushrooms. Um, and the way that this works is if we take and we were to, and let's just put in bulb cap mushrooms, um, they're going to slowly spread. We just need one laid down and it's gonna spread over to adjacent uh, composted blocks. So those three different mushrooms you can farm um, with these standard procedures, but I'm going to show you how you can farm any kind of plant from between lands as well. Um, but anyways, back over to here, um, you've got this stuff planted and you're waiting for it to grow. Now, one thing that you can do is you can make ground dried swamp reed, uh, which is made with dried swamp reed, which is smelted swamp reed, and then you run it through a pestle and mortar. And we're going to talk a little bit more about the pestle and mortar next episode uh, when we cover alchemy. But um, this stuff works pretty much like bone meal. So we can just go up and we can right click 
and we can grow uh, you know these different plants up to full size and when these turn white you know that they're ready and when these grow all massive like this you know that they're ready now as far as um, harvesting these the spores you're going to want to left click and break them the white pears you can just right click and kind of pull them off the vine um, until the compost runs out and then you're going to have to restart the plant um, and grow it you know from scratch again uh, so just kind of bear that in mind and then a couple neat little things um, you know we talked briefly about decay and if this little area was to decay with like mature spores on it now most plants if it decays all that's going to happen is whenever you break the plant you're going to get seeds you're not going to get the fruits um, from it but in the case of spores if this decays then you break it you're going to get spores and it's going to create a sporling um, you know the little passive mob uh, is going to spawn up from those spores and you can see over here that these mushrooms have spread um, so just kind of a fun little uh, bit of information there decay once again not a concern if you go ahead and push on for the uh, purified swamp dirt which I highly suggest that you do so right here you can see an example of some areas that have decayed um, this is the white pear bush and so you can see that it has kind of died off and the uh, the mush the spores have turned into this kind of dead version um, the compost has turned very green and you can see lots of particle effects now sometimes you will see particle effects um, for example yeah right here you can see particles coming up off of this ground that means that uh, yeah lively crops yeah right there a little sporling has been created um, you can see let a sporling hatch from your crops that happens um, whenever something decays down to that point that the sporling then just kind of breaks off and does its own thing um, but if you see particles coming up off of dirt that's not decayed that means it's just about to decay um, so it's kind of you have a minute or two uh, where you can visually see that it's just about to go um, before it actually does go so you can harvest your crops if you need to like if I harvest this I'm gonna get the normal items but if I wait for it to decay um, to fully decay then you know of course I'm gonna get just spores and have a chance that um, sporlings will then break off of it like randomly you know now once again the purified dirt will never decay so it is highly suggested that you go with that um, and then you can also see over here where some decay has kind of kicked in so it's very noticeable when you get decay um, because your plant bed is going to look sick so it's very easy to notice and if you have some of this plant tonic uh, what you can do is you can just take right click and you can see all my plants kind of burst back into life um, and so then I can harvest them so if you don't let them break off of course your spores are going to have a chance to automatically break off um, and you can see there's still particle effects coming up um, over here um, let me grab a little bit more plant tonic uh, but you can see some particles that come up off of this ground that's because it's just about to decay um, but if I right click that you're gonna see that the particles stop because it will you can you can apply that plant tonic right before it decays and kind of get rid of that effect and bring it back up to its nutrient levels so that's another option uh, to kind of deal with it decay is not a huge issue um, I had to leave this AFK for a good uh, probably hour um, at least before decay actually set in so it's not something that you consistently have to concern yourself with but it is something to take note of that will happen um, and your plant tonic of course you can see does have a certain amount of uses and it can also be used in the sensor we're going to be talking about the sensor in, in um, after we do alchemy because it's very heavily tied in a lot of ways to alchemy and a spectra seeds but another thing I want to point out that uh, you should be aware of is you know you have to deal with the decay you have to deal with the the compost but if we turn on heavy rain uh, this is the other thing that you have to worry about which is rain because rain in the between lands creates puddles puddles destroy plants so if you don't grow your plants in a sheltered location you can pretty much 100% expect that rain is going to obliterate your plants um, fairly quickly because of course it does rain all the time in the between lands so you can see some puddles have formed on top of these and have obliterated a couple of my uh, crops that were over here there goes another one so I'm gonna go ahead and turn this event off because we don't want to deal with that right now but just bear in mind that rain 
is bad. Um, so I do suggest that you put a roof over this of some sort. Um, make sure it's in a covered location. Of course, these puddles aren't going to spread out. Um, in the past, I've put fences around them and things like that. Um, I do suggest fences, especially if you're updating between lands, um, because I know in the future it's planned that snails will eat your crops. So it's another thing that you'll have to keep an eye out for and watch out for in the future is snails eating your, you know, the crops that you're growing on your farmland. Um, so maybe putting a roof over it and a fence around it to keep unwanted visitors out, not a bad idea. And you can see right here that this bulb cap mushroom has came out to the grass. Um, and the reason being, this is actually the next thing that we're going to talk about, is alternative plant farming. Uh, that's not really the official name for it, but that's what I call it. Uh, but this is, you can do this for pretty much any kind of a plant within the between land. So you can do it with fuller pads, you can do it with mushrooms, you can do it with weedwood bushes, you can do it with a nettle, you can do it with, you know, pretty much anything. Um, it's extremely useful if you have very specific plants that you like to use for alchemy. Um, it's great for that. But it's actually a very, very simple process. What you do is you dig out a space. Also, once again, probably best to go with purified swamp dirt because you're going to get more mileage out of that than having to deal with decay. But what we can do is compost one spot, place a volar, pla uh, volar pad in, and it's going to passively begin spreading very very quickly in this case it's random um, and it doesn't have to go through like growth stages so pretty much whenever it gets a growth tick it goes ahead and throws out a plant um, but with this you can easily farm any number of plants once the compost runs out it's not going to destroy the plant that's on it but you are going to have to recompost that um, in some cases it can be hard to do like weedwood bushes cover almost their entire block space so with these, I would suggest that maybe you leave a spot open uh, like right in here to put in your compost because, for example, if I did this and I put that weedwood bush in, we go and we try to compost this, you know, I can't find an open space. So if I right click the side of it, I can uh, grow more weedwood bushes. Um, but that's going to allow you to farm most any crop, any plant um, in the mod in case you want to use it for decor, alchemy, or, you know, whatever. So that pretty much covers the basics of farming. You got your, kind of your plant duplication, um, like for example with the volar pads that we did over here. Um, you have your standard farming, you have your decay, and all that to kind of keep in mind, and ways that your crops can become destroyed. Now there is one additional farming, uh, farming system, and that is a spectra seeds. We're not going to be talking about a spectra seeds in this episode, because it's makes more sense for it to be after we cover alchemy and once we start covering the sensor then we'll talk about a spectra seeds used to it worked a little bit different where you would use a vial of an aspect and just imbue the dirt works a little bit different now with the addition of the sensor the sensor has a ton of really nice effects um, and very useful effects so we're going to be covering that after alchemy because um, there is a couple alchemy related things that you can do with the sensor um, so we're going to be covering a spectra seeds after that so anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed the episode. If you did, as always, be sure and hit that like button and go ahead and subscribe if you're not already to stay updated with when new videos come out. So anyways, I hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope to see you guys next time. Until then, as always, do take care, stay safe, and I'll see you guys then.